Good morning. Well, in between rain showers, I'm out in my, my garden, which basically I put to bed a while ago. Well, these flowers have a mind of their own. They're pretty tenacious. They're still hanging on here in mid-November. So I thought that was kind of odd. So I figured I'd take a picture and throw up on Facebook. Since the weather's been so bad recently, I haven't had a, had a chance to go out and do a lot of photography. But I thought it might be a good time to weigh in on a certain subject matter. So I have a confession to make. I shoot JPEG. Yeah! That being said, I shoot RAW as well. Good grief, I can do both. <laughs> This, this subject of RAW versus JPEG, I think, is, is absolutely silly. Why people can't let other people do what they want to do or without weighing in on it. It seems like uh, people have a hard time understanding that not everybody's approach or needs is going to be the same. Now, for me, I shot, I shot almost exclusively JPEG for most of my career as a press news photographer. And until a couple months ago, I was still shooting pretty much all my work photos in JPEG. That's 25 years of photography. Now, I, I don't know if that makes me a professional. Well, I, I think it does. But by reading the comments and watching videos on YouTube, the only way to be a professional, I guess, is if you shoot RAW. Well, RAW doesn't work for the situation I was in. And I can see, and I, I shoot RAW now for a lot of things that I shoot because I can, and it makes sense. But as a news photographer, it didn't make any sense to me. Now, coming from the newspaper industry, it's, it's no secret that the, uh, that industry is really struggling financially. A lot of businesses have, uh, a lot of papers have gone out of business. A lot of layoffs. I was fortunate enough to, to have a long career there and I left because I wanted to do something different and have the time to do it. And, but there are still a lot of excellent photographers out there cranking out every day and I, I would venture a guess, not just a guess, I know there are a lot of them that still shoot JPEG. Now here are the reasons why. Four to eight assignments a day. Speed. Speed is king, man. I mean, it, this industry now is, is, is live. It's not about deadlines. Oh, I gotta make deadlines. No, it's about, you're getting that up on the internet now. You're, 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 you're uh, the closer you can show the images to when it happened, the better. People want to see it almost, it's basically live. You go to a breaking news, you're shooting JPEG, it's going to your phone, and it's up on the, the internet in minutes. That is the reality of photojournalism in this day and age. That's just it. Why, why would you shoot raw? when newsprint isn't going to show all that anyway and when you shoot for the web your images are like this there's no point to it these images are meant to tell a story the quality is good and you don't need to clog up the system with these huge raw files archiving okay you can say well memory's cheaper now it's cheaper well it is for individuals, but if you are a staff of six photographers, you're all, if you're all shooting raw, how many terabytes of space you're going to need to archive your historical photos? It just makes no sense, considering that you don't need that, you don't need those raw files for your product. This is starting to sound like a rant. <laughs> this isn't meant to be a rant. I, I just want to defend all of us stupid people and not professionals 
that uh, have shot JPEG for the, for a long time. I don't know why the the topic of raw versus JPEG has to be so divisive. Do you think it's some kind of religion? It's just making images. It's just photography. It's not brain surgery. Camera settings. My color space would be Adobe RGB. Color profile would be a, a neutral, some kind of neutral setting. Wouldn't have it on vivid or anything. No saturation. I think it's called neutral on, on Nikons. Very little sharpening and a little noise reduction. That's it. That's the sauce. One of the misconceptions that I've seen repeated over and over in the comments on some of these uh, stories that I read or, or videos I watch is you don't want to let the camera edit the images for you, do you? <laughs> okay. The camera's not editing the, anything. The camera is applying the algorithm that of what you want it to do in, in camera. Now, you can do that in RAW, or you can do that in, with a JPEG. If you're shooting for the web, at some point, that information is going to be gone. So, yes, you are getting a compressed file, and you're not going to have as much data as you would on your, your RAW file. But if you get your camera set up right, and you're willing to do a little bit of processing, I mean, I'm not saying you, you take the image right out of camera and use it, which I, I have many times, because they were good enough. And for breaking news, good enough is what you use. But people mis misrepresent what you can do with a JPEG file. I mean, there's, <laughs> there, there is some, some ways to make the best out of that image. You just have to, use, you just have to set your camera up right you have to expose the image right. Well, it's starting to rain here again. So I'm going to take this take this indoors and we'll uh, we'll work up an image or two. A couple images I have in JPEG. Maybe I'll show you a few examples of something I shot in JPEG on accident. Possibly. <laughs> Grab the wrong camera. It would just turn out fine. So here we have a covered bridge. It's not too far from my house. And this is the JPEG. Nothing's been done to it. It's right out of the camera. The sky is has some detail. It's a little bit underexposed in the foreground. Well, it's pretty much every, underexposed except for the sky. So there's a couple ways that you could deal with this. I'm going to put this into the develop persona. I didn't realize you could actually do this with a JPEG, but it's pretty cool. Let you control this JPEG like you would similarly to how you would a raw image. I would probably do this in reverse though as, than I would a raw image. So what I'm going to do here is work on the areas I want to lighten first. So, I'm going to do an overlay. And I'm going to get a new brush. I'm going to set the hardness to zero. Just how I, that's how I roll. And I'm going to paint the areas I want to lighten up. The dynamic range on this, this is, this is from a Nikon D810. It's it's pretty amazing. These modern cameras are just fantastic for even in, even in JPEGs for keeping a lot of the detail in the shadows. I'm gonna paint the areas I want to lighten. Now I don't know if this is uh, really meant to be used like this, but um, I think it works pretty good. If I was to work on JPEGs a lot, this would probably be a way I would uh, approach them in Affinity Photo. 
This is just to show that you can actually process JPEG images. So let's lighten that. Let's lighten that area up now. Wow, look at that. Wow, that looks pretty good. What I think this image is going to end up being is black and white. It's it was very dark, dull, not a good light. It's not, you're not going to get a great image on on a day like that anyway. So I envision this as a black and white image. But that's pretty good balance. I mean that looks that looks pretty good. You got um, a lot of detail in the shadows here still. Sky's got information. I might burn that sky in just a little bit. Let's let's do another overlay. Let's uh, see if we can't do a little burn here, huh? See if we can't burn that in a little bit more. The contrast. Okay, so for here, I'm just going to hit develop. Now, this isn't a great image and I can lighten up I can lighten up these areas with the dodge and burn tools a little bit more but right now I think I, I envision this as a black and white so let's just go ahead and convert to black and white make sure the image is flattened I'm gonna take it into these Nick plugins and silver effects pro I'm gonna convert this to black and white since there's really not a lot of color here to begin with. There we go. Okay, well, that's not too bad. A little bit too much. So it's pretty balanced. I don't think I want to make it too contrasty. So now we have a black and white image. But I, I'd like to see this lighten up a little bit. Maybe still make the white a little whiter. So what I'm going to do here is make a pixel layer. I'm going to fill it. 50% gray. This is how you do a non-destructive dodge in Affinity Photo. And you're gonna hit it on, put it on overlay. Hit the dodge tool here. Let's go ahead and work, lighten it up just a little bit, a little bit in the highlights. Just give it a little more pop. Right now, it's just a little flat for my taste. Don't need it to be super contrasty, but definitely want separation in tones. look white so if someone tells you that you're letting the camera do the editing well no you're not you're just that's just one step in the process so that's it that's how I process my JPEG images camera edit the photos.